I don't know about you, but I really do feel like this is our season. So let's thrive together, baby. <laughs> Grab yourself a nice cozy drink and a little snack. And I will talk you through all of the books that are on my autumnal fall TBR. I do have to say, usually TBRs were something that I made and that I would just like not pursue at all. I would just make a list of the books that were like on my semi soon to read list and I just, I never picked them up. I just made the video. But last year's TBR, I actually stuck to it really quite well. I know, I know, I'm even impressed with myself. <laughs> so I thought, Let's make another one, shall we? So I have divided this stack into two little piles, as you might be able to tell. So these are the books that I'm pretty sure I will be getting to this season. Some of them are like a little bit more fall, dark academia, Halloween themed than others. And then I have three books that are like on the questionable list. I don't know. <laughs> books that just really seem like they would fall well into this seasonal time. Maybe I just need a little bit more of convincing from you guys in order to pick one of these up. So let's just get started. I hurt myself with the heaviness of these books. <laughs> so let's get to the book that I'm currently reading, which I am so excited about because I've been saying this on my channel a lot, but I've just been going through a breakup and it's been a while since I've had this feeling of, oh my god, I want to read a book. I want to enjoy every single single page and I just want to keep on reading a good story that I'm currently reading right now. Well, for this book, that is what is happening with me again and it's making me feel so excited and that is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I know that this is like a well-loved book in the community and that it has been out for a while. The sequel has been so like talked about over the past year because so many people have been anticipating that release. And I have this thing with hyped books that I don't want to pick them up because I'm so scared that the hype will just like not be something for me, that the book will just like disappoint me. So I'm about like 80 pages into the story and I keep on thinking about wanting to pick this book up. Like every time time that I come home from a lecture or that I'm just like doing something else other than reading and it's been such a long time since I've experienced that feeling and it's glorious as you can tell. <laughs> I'm listening to the audiobook as well which is phenomenal so I think that you can say that this story is told from kind of like a dual point of view so you have Alex Stern and Daniel Arlington aka Darlington <laughs> which that name <laughs> also Alex is actually called Galaxy like these names they're a little bit like <laughs> why <laughs> but I, I guess it's cool and you basically get told the story through their kind of like two perspectives and also in different time Line. So you kind of like jump from um, early spring to winter to last fall. And it is a very intriguing way of telling the story because some things get foreshadowed and then they will be explained like later or you get flashbacks and it's so cool. So let me actually tell you how this starts off. What I know so far about Alex Stern is that she's had quite the troubled past and that she has been found as like the sole survivor of a multiple homicide. And like no one really knows why she has survived. But at her hospital bed, she gets offered a really great deal that she cannot decline, which is to attend Yale and study there and join one of their secret societies, which is very special since she doesn't even have a high school diploma. But Alex is wondering, like, what is the catch here? Like, why am I of all people invited to join this like university in the secret society. And I guess that that is what we're going to find out in the duration of reading this book. It is such a delicious book until so far with that elite university rich people. <laughs> feel. I don't know. It's just very mysterious. You want to be part of this group. You want to know their secrets. And I'm just gobbling up this book so far. Wait, I have more books that I want to add to this TBR. Oh God. Now I'm not sure whether I'm going to make it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I was thinking with that being said about secret societies and murder mystery, because that's kind of like the feel that Ninth House is giving me. I was just like, wait, I have one book that I should not forget to put on my TBR for this year that kind of like deals with the same themes and it's being talked about every single year. So it's not going to be a surprise. I'm going to keep it nice and short. And that is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. It's basically like a modern classic right now. I think it has been written like 20, 30 years ago. And so many of my friends have read it in the past years and have been telling me like, it's so 
good. It is quite slow, I've heard, so I'm hoping that I'll be in that mood. So under the influence of their charismatic classics professor, a group of clever eccentric misfits at an elite New England college discover a way of thinking and living that is a world far away from the humdrum existence of their contemporaries. But when they go beyond the boundaries of normal morality, their lives are changed profoundly and forever. Short description that intrigues me so, so much with Ninth House and some of the other titles that I read last fall. I love morality and morally gray characters, aka just human beings being human beings. And sometimes in books, I find that there is a lack of morally gray characters. <laughs> so I like nuance and people are very nuanced. So I'm hoping that this will have murder mystery, nuanced, morally gray characters, and just this like underlying tension in the story. I think especially Leonie made a great dark academia reading vlog last year, which I highly enjoyed. And she like dissected this whole book and she is making me feel really, really inspired to do that as well. So could not miss this on my TBR. Um, and speaking of Leonie, I got my birthday present from her this past week. It was my birthday in April. <laughs> and I'm like 100% sure that I will be at some point this fall in my fey magical reading mood. And then I will definitely pick up how the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black. I don't know if you know, but I really enjoyed the Cruel Prince trilogy. It has been a while since I finished book three, so I would like to be reminded again of the plot and the big things that happened in those three books because in this, I think it's like short story or like story collections about Cardin, AKA one of the main characters or like our love interest villain type of person in the trilogy. And these stories are all kind of like about Cardin's life before the Cruel Prince trilogy, but also during very important moments in the storyline. But this is not only probably a beautiful fairy tale-esque novel, it is also like beautifully illustrated and it just looks so extremely pretty. I didn't even see this. I haven't even looked at this book underneath the cover and I'm stunning. It also has like a ton of beautiful illustrations. Like the illustration style will probably really reflect the feel and the ambiance of the stories that are in this book. Okay, so next up is kind of like a joke. <laughs> I want to make a couple of dedicated reading vlogs, especially for this book. It's going to be called Giving Her One Last Chance. And I know my, my feelings probably towards this book, towards this author, and that is Verity by Colleen Hoover. Um, as some of you may know, I, I really despise Colleen Hoover and I don't want you to come all like at me and hate me and I'm not going to stop whispering right now. <laughs> I don't want you to like come towards me if you are a big Colleen Hoover fan. You do you boo. It's just not my thing. I used to be a big fan of her when I was like 16 and then I made this reading TikTok romance books video about two years ago, I think, to see whether I still liked her. And I find so many things in her books so problematic. And there are like a ton of YouTubers who have made really great like commentary videos about her and her work, which most of the times I agree with. For me personally, it feels like Colleen Hoover uses very important and difficult topics such as like rape or domestic violence or whatever to mostly further the plot instead of having an actual nuanced good conversation about them, which I don't like. And her male love interests are toxic and weird as fuck. They're creepy. They're creepy. Why do I still want to read this book then? You might ask. I understand why. This is a thriller as far as I know. And I've heard it's very twisted. I've heard it's weird. <laughs> We shall find out what I think of it. But what I do know about Colleen Hoover is her writing style is super addictive. It's so easy to read one of these books within two to three days, which I rarely do nowadays. So I'm hoping I'll be able to do that as well. I might just wanna like fly through these books to get it over with, but I wanna know, what do I think of this book? Do I even wanna give her a chance after this? Do I even wanna? <sighs> Struggles, struggles. So Jeremy Crawford hires our main character, Lowen, to finish writing his wife's unfinished book series. So Lowen basically goes to their home and she's gonna like go through all of Verity's notes on her books to kind of like see, okay, where should I continue on with this book series? What Lowen doesn't expect to uncover in the chaotic office is an unfinished autobiography Verity never intended for anyone to read. Page after page of bone chilling admissions, including Verity's recollection of of the night her family was forever 
altered. Our main character decides to keep this autobiography manuscript hidden from Jeremy, aka Verity's husband, because what it says here is that its contents could devastate the already grieving father. But as Lowen's feelings for Jeremy begin to intensify, of course, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just already like, uh, she recognizes all the ways she could benefit if he were to read his wife's words. After all, no matter how devoted Jeremy is to his injured wife, a truth this horrifying would make it impossible for him to continue loving her. I mean, it sounds super interesting. I just know that probably Colleen Hoover's execution of it is gonna um, make me feel some feelings. But who is excited to see what I think of it? I am. Why am I even gonna torture myself? I don't know why. Of course. Of course I'm dripping tea all over my room. I wanna read another book by one of my favorite authors. I love me a good fantasy and especially from this writer. I know it's gonna be more on the, it's gonna be like gothic or like horror ghosty side of the fantasy side of books. I am talking about Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I, I don't think it's middle grade. I think it's YA, but I'm a little bit unsure. Okay, now this this reminds me so much of like season four Stranger Things of that house. And I want that in my life, okay? 16 year old Olivia Pryor is missing three things, a mother, a father, and a voice. Her mother vanished all at once, her father by degrees, and her voice was a thing she never had to start with. Her only companions are the ghouls she sees and her mother's journal, which captured a mind in turmoil. Ugh, I love me some ghost things. I'm not really gonna spoil anything for Ninth House, but there's definitely like a big element of seeing ghosts, like being able to see them, which I love. I love that idea of a ghost world, the normal world, and them kind of like clashing. Near the end of her time at Maryland School for Girls, Olivia receives a letter from an uncle she's never met, summoning her to his estate, Gallant. But when she arrives, she discovers that the letter was years late. Okay. <laughs> her uncle is dead and the estate is empty, save for her cousin Matthew and the servants. Olivia is permitted to remain, but must follow two rules. Don't go out after dusk, and always stay on the right side of the crumbling wall. But Gallant is a house of secrets, a house sitting in lonely vigil, a place where the ghouls are powerful. As Olivia searches for answers about her family, her past, she discovers a dark reflection of everything she knew, an ancient realm where ghosts take form and the dark master sits waiting for her. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, I'm sorry. Sign me up. Also, it's quite short, so I feel like it would be something that I would be able to fly through since it's just 300 pages, and that is kind of refreshing when you have quite the pile of books that are like four to 600 pages long. Okay, I already have quite a solid TBR considering the amount of books that I do read within a month, which are about three, usually. I don't know, I'm gonna like make a little maybe pile and you guys will have to help me out with choosing which one of the books on the maybe pile I will be picking up. So the last book that I really wanna give a go, do you do you recognize the cover? Do you recognize it? Are you, What are your feelings when you see that? Do you, do you think, oh my gosh, I wanted to pick that up? Or is it like, girl, why are you doing this to yourself? Because I want to finally, after years of trying to finish this freaking trilogy. I want to do it. And that is A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. I reread A Court of Mist and Fury one and a half years ago in preparation to finally pick up the third book. When I was 16 and I read Akamaf, five out of five stars. When I was 23 and reading Akamaf, I was like, I understand why people give it either a one out of five stars or a five out of five stars. It's just a highly entertaining series, but also so cringeworthy. Yeah, that's it basically. Cringeworthy, but addictive. Don't let the like deceiving look of this book confuse you because it looks like a 400 page book, right? It's it's 700, 700 pages of fey porn, probably. <laughs> Which is not a bad thing. I think it's gonna be super, super entertaining. And I also wanna make a dedicated reading vlog to it because I know so many of you have read this series and I feel like whatever someone, AKA me right now, is gonna like pick up a well beloved but also hated book in a series, people wanna find out what your opinion is. So I, I wanna give that to you. And I also wanna do it myself. I think it's gonna be like highly entertaining. <laughs> the last book that I would love to pick up this autumn that is not on the maybe pile is The Picture of Dorian Gray. Oh my gosh, this edition is everything. 
I love it so much. Brit from Basically Brit, one of my very good friends and basically like a ton of other people that I know, also of my like Dutch booktube friend circle, they are obsessed with the picture of Dorian Gray. Now, I had to read this book for my English class back in 2016, but we didn't because our teacher was like, let's watch the movie instead. But I was always super, super intrigued about this book because if you don't know, it's a classic. So probably everyone knows what this book is about. Dorian Gray gets his portrait painted and he would give up everything, even his soul to stay as young as he is at that time. But the thing is, while he, in real life stays as youthful and beautiful and can live the most extravagant life that he's always wished for, his portrait starts to age, which sounds hella creepy to me. <laughs> that's all that I know about it. And that's all that I want to know. I want to be a classics girly. I, I am not until so far because they highly intimidate me. Also, English is not my first language. So I find it very difficult to read old English books and to be able to like fully understand the meaning of the words and the ambiance and the themes and it's it's difficult. I like reading but I'm not a literature girly but I want to give it a go and I want to be able to talk with my friends about this book as well. So this is actually quite the pile quite a big pile that I would love to pick up this season. I put some other books on the maybe pile I will just show them to you and maybe you can help me out to pick one of these that I might want to read this season. So there are four books. This one, okay, let's start with that, that brick of a book that intimidates the heck out of me, but that sounds absolutely wonderful. And that is Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. I know that Leora from Leora Eileen love this book this past year. It takes place in Edinburgh. It deals with children with magical dark abilities. And I think it takes place at the end of the 1800s with a magical secluded school. So those are like the rapid fire buzzwords that I'm throwing at you to help me make a decision. <laughs> then I have My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Again, Leora, love this one. I mean, just look at how this book is kind of like a VHS tape. Love that. Apparently it's like a summer horror book. So not as like autumnal maybe, but it's like an 80s inspired exorcism type book. Like the best friend has a demon in them, I think. I'm not sure, but it just looks cool. I've heard so many great things about it. And Grady Hendrix is a very well-known like horror author that a ton of people just like love to read from. Then I have The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I loved her book last year, In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife. That one was so good. And I think literally, the last five pages had me like shocked. I don't know if this is like her newest release right now, but I, it has been recently released. And it's about a girl who has been part of a cult and she's now gonna help a podcast host to make a podcast about that cult. And I think she has to go back to that place that she's always sworn off from going to again. And basically she wants to find justice for whatever has happened to her. The last one that I would be interested in picking up is Wayward by Amelia Hart. And I think you basically follow the Wayward women in the Wayward family, but at three different points in time. So we follow Kate in 2019, Violet in 1942, and Alta in 1619. And these women are connected somehow, and it has to deal with witches, which intrigues me a lot. And just, ah, it looks so magical. So I'd love to get your help in deciding which one of these four I should add to my TBR. I mean, I know for a fact that I will not be reading all of these books, but just like last year, I do hope that I will be reading the majority of them, which already would be such an amazing accomplishment. Let me know in the comments down below what your fall reading plans are. Have you read some of the books that I talked about today? And what were your thoughts? I wanna know. Let me know in the comments down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in my next video, which might be a fall reading vlog. Okay, bye.